time to be creative. Welcome to the start of the series entitled Amazing Machine Embroidery Encore. I use the word encore since this series is an update to an extremely popular trend of computerized machine embroidery. Eileen Roche, editor of the magazine Designs of Machine Embroidery, is my guest once again. She was with me last year when we did a series together and she's back to share great inspiration. Eileen, great to work with you again. Thank you, Nancy. It's a pleasure to be here. Today we're going to show how easy it is to incorporate embroidery designs into landscapes and scenes. Our verse and our coordinating designs would make a wonderful gift. We're going to show you how easy it is to place the designs and just how much fun machine embroidery can be. Discover the joy of machine embroidery next time, Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is brought to you by FOF, the largest European producer of sewing machines. FOF's creative line of sewing machines and hobby lock sergers are simply the best. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Madeira, superior quality threads from Germany, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Prim Dritz, the source for sewing and quilting notions, including products by Dritz Collins and Omnigrid. Amazing designs by Great Notions, your one source for home embroidery. Over 200 disc pack collections currently available, including designs by Nancy Zeman. Koala cabinets from Australia, quality crafted, fully assembled sewing furniture, designed for maximum storage in minimum space. Rowenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing, the choice of professionals. And Nancy's Notions catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and unique hard to find sewing notions and supplies. Our first project in this series is very simple, but it takes some planning as all the projects of machine embroidery take. And you saw this earlier where we have the Chinese proverb of a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, plus we have several other designs that go with this, this simple little quote and how true it is. Now Eileen, I'm going to first show everyone how to set up the machine and then Eileen will give you the basics of working with embroidery. For computerized machine embroidery, there are two different types of mediums, possibly uh, three really, of that you're going to find your designs on. We're going to first start with the simplest. That's a memory card. The cards are purchased to fit with specific machines. The cards go into the machine, and the designs come right up on the screen. So it's a fast way. Another type of format is a floppy disk. Floppy disks and CDs need to work with your computer plus software or a reader writer program with your machine so that the computer can transfer the design into a memory card so then you can put it in the machine. It takes a little extra step. Usually floppy disks are more reasonable but you get the same wonderful results with either format or, or any of the three formats. You're going to use a machine embroidery thread. I have rayon thread chosen, all the colors that I need for this design. A lightweight bobbin thread, a machine embroidery needle, you put on your embroidery unit, depending upon your type of machine, you'll have different instructions. You'll also be instructed to use a darning foot and lower the feed dog so that you, the machine will determine where the design will be stitched. So that's the basic summary of the machine setup. But Eileen, when you chose this design or, or worked with it, you did a lot of planning. I did, and it begins with the fabric. I chose a hand-painted fabric because mm -hmm. it's a wonderful backdrop for embroidery. It lets the embroidery just pop right off of the scene. And then I worked with templates so that mm -hmm. I could uh, place my embroidery and know exactly what my end result would be before I started. To get the, the scene effect, Eileen chose a darker fabric for the ground, drew a light line where she'd like her horizon, then did a straight stitch along that line. And That's right, Nancy. And then I use applique scissors and remove the excess fabric. At this point, I start my embroidery because I don't want satin stitching underneath of my embroidery. It may cause a bump. Now, we have added a little extra stability, a permanent stability, a fusible stabilizer heavyweight to this design since it's going to be framed. And we did that before doing any of the stitching, of course. And now you can use templates, as Eileen said. Purchase templates that we have here. And you kind of just tape, tape them into place wherever you'd like the design. Don't look at the crosshairs right now. Just look at where you'd like the footprints or the silhouette of the hiker to be. Now, if you don't have the purchase templates, you can make them yourself by stitching on a heavy or densely woven fabric, just the outline of the design, 
mark the top. You can possibly see I have top marked on it, and I've cut it the size of my hoop so that I could place this wherever I'd like the footprints to go. Either way, do, we, do, we don't um, really, it doesn't really matter which you use, just use a template. That's right, because it, you'll get professional results before you even start. Now I'm going to frame this within my hoop, placing the larger hoop on the tabletop and the smaller hoop on top of the fabric, which is over the lar lower hoop, and I'll press. And then, Eileen, you have the phrase already hooped on your sample, and I do. you can show that. That's right. Nancy, We uh, what I did initially was I took the frame that the f finished project sits in, and I laid that over top of my landscape and determined exactly where I want those words to be centered in that left frame. Once I determined that, I then, you know, I had my template taped down, and it was time to embroider. Once my fabric is hooped, I like to go and push the inner hoop down a little bit. That's called countersinking and that uh, adds a little bit more stability to your hoop project. Now I have my uh, memory card with my designs on it and I'm going to insert that into the machine, select card. I'm going to have a whole menu of designs that come up and I need to search for my verse. Once I find it, I select it. At this point, the machine is going to ask me a number of uh, items that Nancy had just walked us through, like did you lower your feed dogs and insert a full bobbin. And since I did do all those things, I can go ahead and raise my uh, presser foot so that I can insert my hoop. Once I do that, I select OK. Now I see that my burst does not match my template. It is actually in a horizontal position, in a vertical position, and I need it to be in a horizontal position. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and then I have to move my needle to the start position of mm -hmm. my template. I'm able to do that on my machine by the up and down arrows. Once I'm exactly where I want it, I then lower my presser foot, remove my template. You don't want to stitch through it because you might want to use it again. And then it's time to stitch. But before you stitch, why don't you put some stabilizer underneath? Oh, absolutely, Nancy. And you know, you had a really good point earlier. We, she takes um, cutaway or tearaway stabilizer and she slits a cut into it so that you can get underneath or right through that needle that has already penetrated the fabric. Mm -hmm. I guess, Nancy, you've taken one or two stitches before <laughs> yes. and realized you forgot that extra stabilizer. That's so common. Right. And now I'm ready to sew. As it sews, and this is a, a great design because it's only one color, so I, I only have inserted mm -hmm. the one color and I can either walk away from my machine or stay with it to make sure that nothing happens to the thread. And it's going to stitch it right out, and it's a beautiful process. Actually, we have one done. Nancy, if you want to take a sure. look at that. It's all in the planning because the stitching is so very simple. After the embroidery would be stitched, this is what the, the phrase will look like, the Chinese proverb. And you'll notice all these thread tails that jump between the various verses. What's needed now is just to clip those away after you've removed them from the hoop, and it will be a beautiful design. After one design has been embroidered, then remove the hoop from the fabric, reposition it so that you can stitch the other elements, and presto, you'll have a great gift. A disc pack of embroidery designs and a touch of the imagination are all you'll need to create a one-of-a-kind Halloween banner. Nancy and I will show you how to combine two sewing skills, applique and embroidery, in a whimsical thread and fabric creation. We just finished showing you a project that worked with a memory card. Now we're going to work with a floppy disk takes an extra step of working with your computer and a reader writer program or software. And Eileen is going to show you how to work with the Halloween disc that has all these fun characters on it. And then we're going to start off with this fun little witch with green face and all and how to transfer it to your machine's card. That's right. You know, when you purchase a floppy disk, you first have to um, put it, on, install it on your hard drive. And then when you're ready to open it up, you need to find it on your hard drive click OK, and up she comes. I'm going to right click so that I cannot manipulate the design at this point. I'm going to go up to the toolbar and select the icon that tells me that I'm going to write to my card. I have two things that tell me that everything is working the way I want it to. On the computer, I have a box that says saving the stitch on the card, please wait. Over at the machine, on the screen I have two icons. One is the sewing machine and the other is the computer with a line going through it. And then that means they're talking to each other. When the window disappears from the computer 
and those two icons disappear from my sewing machine, I know that my card already has the design on it. I then go and select card. I find my witch. All those prompts again. Do I have my feed dogs lowered in a full bob? And I say, OK. Uh, and now it's time to actually place my witch. I'm going to show you when you work with templates, um, you, well, actually, when you work with a floppy disk, you have the ability to print your computer screen right onto paper or a transparency. And here's the paper printout. But paper isn't as easy to work with as a transparency because you can't see through it. You could use this, but the ideal format is a transparency to print on that. That's right, Nancy. You have to get the right one for your computer printer, either inkjet or laser, and just insert it into your printer like you normally would. Unfortunately, we're working with a dark background fabric. It's a little di bit difficult for you to see that transparency, so Eileen has put some paper behind it. That's right, Nancy. Um, you could do a couple things. You could put you know, paper, like Nancy said, or stabilizer, or you could even use your hand, just something so that you can illuminate that design on the dark fabric. Um, I've done that, and I'm satisfied that the witch is centered in the upper opening of my letter B. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach my hoop to the machine. I already have my design selected. And I'm just going to make sure that uh, I'm going to move my needle to the center start position. And on that template, I had actually um, marked the crosshair mm -hmm. with another pen so that it was even darker than normal so that I could get a very good image. So you know exactly where to start. I do. And don't forget, remove your template. Y yes. And my needle's in the proper position. I'm going to hold on to my thread. And we did put a stabilizer in the hoop. We in, did, but in, we need another one. Sure. Nancy. You can always add another layer of stabilizer. Doesn't hurt. And all the planning now is coming to the fun part, because now you just do the stitching. The That's right. Now, this design takes 11 colors. And my hint, uh, when I work with embroidery, what I like to do is line up my colors the closest one to me, the first one I'm going to use. And as I use the color, then I just transfer it over to the right side of my machine. Then I know exactly what color to pick up next. I do this because I have had red grass instead of green grass. And you only do that once before you figure out a way to get your color sequence correct. That's right, Nancy. Sometimes you're, you're using black, for instance, two times in a design. Mm -hmm. I'll leave a penny in the spot where the second black will go. And that way, I know not to go and skip to the maybe 10th sure. color without getting the second black. Since this design has 11 colors, we're going to let color one stitch out the hair of, the, of our little witch character. And after it's done stitching, it will tell us, change your thread colors. That's right. We're actually going to get an image right on the, on the machine that's going to say, change to color number two. Keep in mind, too, you can use a different color combination than the, the, the disc may tell you to stitch, depending upon your fabrics. But with this, which it really was very easy to follow that sequencing because the colors are almost perfect. That's right, Nancy. And you know, when selecting color, you really want to think about your background color and contrast mm -hmm. between your embroidery thread and your background fabric, unless you're doing a monochromatic tone. I bet we're almost there. I bet we are. I think it's just about maybe five more stitches. So right here on the screen, we're going to get, it says, thread change, color number two. After stitching 10 more colors, <laughs> we would have the witch design right in the center of this B. And we're going to show you one more idea. You can use the design as is from the disc, or you can enlarge and delete part of the design. The hat on this O is the witch's hat minus the face and the hair with a pro software program to change sizes. Eileen's going to show you how to modify that design. That's right, Nancy. And I pulled up my witch again now on my computer screen in a sizing and editing software. And this software program gives me the ability to manipulate stitches so that I can get a different result. You'll notice that there's handles all around the design so that it means it's selected. I'm going to um, click on our next color key so that I can advance through the colors. And then I'm going to take my Select Color Tool. And you'll see, as I click outside of the design, I, my handles are now in a smaller position. And that means that only the hair is, collect, is um, selected. So I'm going to delete the hair. Then I'm going to go to the next one, and I'm going to delete the outline of the hair. I think that's the witch's mouth. Now we get her teeth and the little spider off her hat. Well, she's actually not green now, Nancy. She's a funky blue, but we'll get rid of that, too. <laughs> and there's some shading. Now we're at the hat. 
And now I can advance through and take a really good look at the hat. I have the fill stitches, the shading stitches, now I have the belt and the buckle. Oh, but the outline also includes the witch. So let's get rid of that also. I'm hitting delete on my keyboard and then I have my final hat. I'm going to go and select the design and I'm going to make it nice and big. As big as I want. I can center it. I can make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to print a new template of this design, Nancy. And presto, we have the template. It's on the transparency paper and on this sample I have it positioned over the O of, an, of the applique where I'd like it. You'd hoop the fabric the same way that we worked with earlier, select the thread colors, stitch, and you'd have your design. I hope you'll give it a try. So far in this series of amazing machine embroidery encore, Eileen and I have shown you how to create a scene with embroidery as well as work with applique. Now, the showcase of working with this wall hanging called North Pole, you'll see a combination of applique, embroidery, landscaping, and a few more techniques. Absolutely. Eileen, this is really fun. Thanks, Nancy. I did have a lot of fun making this quilt. And one technique that we do want to show your viewers mm -hmm. is this dimensional applique. And I used here stretch velour. And in our sample, we actually use fleece. So you can use a variety of different fabrics. It has a nap. And all I did was uh, cut strips about one and a half inches wide of different widths, stitch them down at the top, and then applied the other strip above it hiding up that previously stitched line. Now with the Santa embroidered right on top of the design, we had to take or you had to take some special consideration for a stabilizer. That's right, Nancy. And we used a water soluble stabilizer. This is really heavy. It is very heavy. The heaviest you can get, we've put the strips for the pine tree down already and hooped it all. We're going to or we have in the next sample we have an elf em embroidered over this. So we already positioned the elf template so we have the everything in place. And by stitching over that heavy duty stabilizer, you've done a couple of things. That's right, Nancy. Uh, number one, it, it, it enables the embroidery to sit up and above the nap mm -hmm. of the fabric. But it also secures all these loose ends while you're embroidering so they don't get caught up underneath the needle. You can soak it or spritz it with water to get rid of the extra, but you can see you have a dimensional embroidery, but yet everything sits, the little elf is sitting right in front of that That's tree. That's right. It's so cute. Well, speaking of kind of cute things, we have so many other Santa scenes to share with you. Nancy, this, uh, this block here is North Pole because he has a little sign that says the North Pole. And I think everybody's image of Santa is a little bit different. So mine is that if he lived at the North Pole, he would live in a gingerbread house. Mm -hmm. Of course, he could be a woodsman. And um, this is North Woods Santa. And he's got horses in his yard and bunnies at his feet and even a squirrel in his hand. Farmer Santa, of course, would be in denim overalls with a cow in his barn, a pickup truck in his driveway, and a silo next to his barn. This silo is made out of Teflon fabric. Cute. Thank you. Rooftop Santa is a little bit different because it's not a, an actual horizon, but mm -hmm. again, it is a landscape scene. I just added some snow fabric on top of brick fabric and placed Santa right on top. And next we have a rather chubby Santa. Right. And of course, chubby Santa would have to live in a chubby house. So we made sure that his <laughs> house was nice and wide with a great wide door that he could get through. We also have a little Santa. This is Troll Santa. And he lives inside of a tree. So he's very tiny and his tree is very big. I made a little door just out of quilting stitches, just some free motion on this interesting bark-like fabric. And he lives next door to Slay Santa. Sleigh Santa has a whole army of elves that are helping to load his sleigh. And last but not least is Tall Santa. And of course, Tall Santa would live in a tall house. Oh, of course he would. Yeah. I think it's really important that you take a wide look at this quilt because you can see the interesting sashings, the use of checks that Eileen used to put this all together. It's really inspiring. Thank I've been you. inspired. I hope you are too. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> A wise person wrote, plan your work, then work your plan. That sums up computerized machine embroidery. Plan by choosing thread and fabric, determine the placement, and review the stabilizer options, then simply stitch the design. Next, learn options for red work. Here's a hint from Primdritz, the manufacturers of OmniGrid rulers. These precision laser-cut rulers give unmatched accuracy. They're made of heavy-duty clear acrylic and are perfect for worry cutting any color fabric from light to dark. 
OmniGrid's exclusive double sight lines are printed on the underside of the ruler for greatest accuracy in contrasting black and yellow, enabling you to see the measurements you need. Notice the ease of measuring on this pink fabric as well as a dark print. In addition to the straight cutting lines, you'll find degree lines, 60, 45, and 30, allowing you to cut geometric shapes without the use of templates. I think you can see why I use OmniGrid rulers on TV and at home. Here's a hint from Amazing Designs by Great Notions. Sometimes a garment requires subtle embroidery due to the fabric weight or the delicate garment style, like this cotton piquet shell. Amazing Designs suggest looking at embroidery designs with a new eye. Look to see if you can eliminate some colors or elements to get a completely different look. The flowers on this shell are from the Amazing Designs Floral Collection number 5, where they are shown in very large, vibrant flowers. By eliminating all the color except the outline, you have a look that's just right for this garment. Here's a look at Rowenta's Steam Generator, an iron I use in my home and at the studio. The Steam Generator features a lightweight iron and a 33 ounce water tank for steam on demand. Continuous steam is available at a touch of a button, generating twice as much steam as a conventional iron. I use the vertical steam feature for final pressing and when creating home decorating projects. The steam generator's water tank provides up to one and a half hours of steam without refilling. Now you can see why Rowenta is a choice of professionals. Have you ever tried computerized embroidery? If not, today is the perfect time to try virtual embroidery. This embroidery technique is as simple as touching buttons and by watching you'll be able to soon see what a creative outlet it can be. My guest during this three-part series on Amazing Machine Embroidery Encore is Eileen Roche. Eileen is an embroidery designer and specialist who can turn a simple design into a wow embroidery. Welcome back, Eileen. Thanks, Nancy. It's great to be here. Today we're going to do a series of projects based on red work, which is a late 19th century art form in where hand stitches were done with red floss on an outline. But today it's all computerized and we're going to do it in a flash with some creative options. Discover the joy of sewing and embroidery next on Sewing with Nancy. During the second program of Amazing Machine Embroidery Encore, Eileen and I would like to start by showing you a quick review of computerized embroidery. We're going to be working with a floppy disk and as we mentioned earlier, working with a red work design so that it's the outline stitch, a really simple design, perfect place to start. Your machine will have to have the embroidery unit attached, refer to your owner's manual. You're going to be working with a darning foot or an embroidery foot, Laura the Feed Dogs. We're working with red work, so obviously red embroidery thread and the lightweight thread in the bobbin. One of the key things is to lower your feed dogs. Again, check your owner's manual for the machine setup that you may have for this embroidery unit. Now, Eileen has already taken the disc, inserted it into her computer, and transferred one of the designs into her to her memory card. And we're working with this really quaint design, and you designed this, Eileen. How nice. I do. Thanks, Nancy. And the we're going to first, first stitch the little bumblebee in the corner. Mm -hmm. And I have already, like Nancy said, put it on my machine. I have my placement set with the templates. And I'm going to lower my presser foot and hold on to my thread and just start to embroider. And red work is really just outline stitches. These are quilting designs um, that you could use in other colors or in monofilament thread if you were actually working on a quilt. This particular design, the bumblebee, is two colors and if you know black and yellow like it would mm -hmm. normally be, but we're going to just stitch both of them in red. And there's our first color already completed. It's very simple and quick. Now one point to mention is that we didn't use a stabilizer and in our first program we stressed stabilizers and here we don't have one. That's right Nancy. Um, it's just a simple outline stitch. It does not need a lot of stability at all. So um, this is a nice pretty tight woven fabric and it's just fine on that. And as long as the fabric is very taut in the hoop you're ready to do the stitching. That's right. The advantage of working with a floppy disk that has a design is that you can change the design size. We'll refer back to this pillow and look at the center of the design, which is the beehive. On the disc, the design is very small. Eileen's going to show you now how to make this design much larger. I'm in my sizing and editing software, and I've opened up my beehive design. And as you can see, it is very small. 
So I'm just going to go and grasp the handle and make it big. I'm going to hit my centering mark so that I know um, it's still going to fit in the hoop. I'm then going to go to the keyboard and hit Control C for copy. And then I'm going to go over to my bow design. Now I know I'm going to have to move my bow up and out of the way before I hit Control V on the keyboard for paste. I then move my design down. Now I can get a really good look at that beehive and see if it needs to be smaller or larger. And I think I'm satisfied with this design. I will save these two designs in their appropriate format and write them to the card. Also, what you'll be doing is printing out a paper or a transparency template so that you can position it on your fabric. That's right, Nancy. Now, in addition to working with red work, as an outline design, you could do an instant applique, as Eileen likes to call it, on this vest. She stitched the designs down the vest fronts, but notice the interesting fill-in. Well, the fill-in isn't stitches. Rather, it's using a fabric marking pencil or pen to color in the design. And that way you could kind of like being a little kid and working with a crayon book, fill in the embroidery and get it a quick, nice effect, nice look from that red work stitching. Thank you, Nancy. There's another option. We always like options. With one embroidery disc or card, you can have many options. And this is the red work design. But here, we have the shadow work look on the underside, a slight shading. It's because we've used two layers of fabric, obviously the white top. And then a brown would give you a tan shading through the fabric. For the flowers, you'll see a pink petal area, green leaves and stems, of course. And that has to do with just a little bit of fabric preparation. That's right, Nancy. Um, I've already sent that flower design to my machine, and I've hooped my, my base fabric, which it would be somewhat of a sheer fabric, so that you can see the fabric, the colored fabric behind it. Um, you can use an organdy or a handkerchief linen, something in, along that nature. I'm going to go ahead and place this right on my machine. and. Right before I begin to embroider, I'm going to slide this shadow applique fabric underneath so that when the stitches uh, start to outline the flower, the applique fabric will be caught. So instead of putting a stabilizer here, we put the shadow fabric. That's right. And I'm going to go ahead and get it started. And off it goes. So you're just going to do the outline stitch over two fabrics, and it will take just a few minutes to do this. And after stitching, then you can cut away the excess fabric. This sample show, shows you what the result will be. Using that same fabric combination, take the fabric out of the hoop, and then from the flip side, trim away the excess fabric using a curved embroidery scissors to get your stitching very close to the, to the stitched itself, or getting the fabric close to the stitched area. We stressed, stressed earlier the importance of working with templates, a guideline. And the guideline for putting the stem and the leaves next is what's so important. We will take this template and determine where we'd like the stem to go. But with shadow work, you don't want to have the leaf go over the flower because you would see the red coming through the leaf instead of the green. So we're going to position this. Let me flip it over. I think it might look better in a reversed image make sure that the leaves aren't in the way and kind of tape it down. Now I'm going to hoop the fabric so that the template is centered within the hoop. As with all hoopings for machine stitching, you're going to place the larger hoop on your table first, then place the fabric over the hooped area, and then the small inner hoop. And make certain that that fabric is quite taut in the, in the, fa in the hoop itself. And Eileen would then place this in her machine and tuck the green fabric underneath to do the stitching. Remove the template, and then you can see how easily that, is, that works. So you have to work with the foreground fabric, first of all. Nancy, I have the completed flower here. And I just want to show you that I normally remove the hoop from the machine and leave it right in the hoop because it's you know nice mm -hmm. and firm and so easy to get the scissors around while I go and cut away that excess fabric. And I would trim that all the way around the stitching line. So as a recap, when working with red work, red work is just an outline stitch. You don't have to use a stabilizer when doing the stitching. You can simply use the designs as is, or you can make them much larger if you'd like to use them in combination. Remember, if you'd like to make shadow work 
of your woodwork design, then place the fabric on the underside of the hoop, stitch, and trim. And what a great way to have your first go at machine embroidery. Hope you give it a try. Next, Nancy will show you another amazing machine embroidery encore technique combining fabric and thread options. What treasures would you keep in this special box? How about engraved stationery, cherished letters, or even a string of pearls? Regardless of what treasure is inside the box, the outside embroidery is an equal jewel. Our keepsake box with a water lily scene showcases two encore ideas, embroidering on sheer fabrics and selective embroidery. I'd like to show you again just the cover of the box and point out the two techniques that I mentioned I'm going to share with you. The sheer embroidery is on the outside and the fabric beneath the sheer has selective embroidery. We've used one design but only portions of it throughout the background area. Working on sheer fabrics is our second section but I'll just show you the layers so that you can see we have color coordinated the sheer with one of the water lily scenes and beneath it several of the smaller water, water lilies with just the water, just the lily pad, or the combination of the flower and the pads together. You're able, by using what I call selective embroidery, to work with one design and create many options. Here we have the design itself, and it has, there are actually eight colors, the eighth color being the outline stitch, which we did not choose to stitch. We stitched seven colors to show you what this looked like. If you just stitch colors one through four, you only have the leaf, the pad, and the water. Here's just the water, and then again, just portions of the pads. If you're going to work with selective embroidery, then you may want to outline or make your own templates just to those small areas. It will help you when laying it out. Now you can do this type of selective embroidery by stitching out every section, or you can go to your machine and view the color selection. When you work with your card or your disc to make the design, you'll get a little guide as far as how many colors that there are in this design. And this is the one we're going to work with. You can see the eight colors listed. On my machine, there's a little silhouette of the design. I can advance it, and each machine will be different. You can advance it to see this is color one, just the outline. Color two, another water section, some lily pads, and so forth. So we'll just, we're going to start by sewing some of the lily pads for this design. On my hoop, or in my hoop, I should say, I have the background fabric, the batik fabric. And I have backed it, as we did earlier in this program, with a fuse-on, press-on interfacing to make it crisp, because there are, there are going to be quite a few stitchings on this area. Using your templates, once again, remember planning is the key part with machine embroidery. Position the templates the way you'd like the designs to show. And I like to look at this by having my background design stitch first. So I'm going to stitch these distant lily, lily leaves, or lily pads, excuse me, in the background. And then I would put maybe a couple more in this area. So as before, when working with this, after positioning the templates, we simply place the hoop in the machine. And I'm going to remove the foreground template and then simply walk my, my presser foot over so that it starts in this area. And we'll just get there in a few minutes. As it's walking over that way, I can utilize the hoop, the fabric in the hoop to the greatest potential. And we're almost, we're, we're getting it to move back a little bit further and to make sure that I have the right space. It's taking its time right now. Okay, now I have that needle coming down right in the crosshairs of my template. So I'd simply remove this. The planning part takes the most time. The sewing part doesn't take any time at all. If you'd like, you could add another layer of stabilizer, and, which I'm going to do here, and I'm just going to let this start to sew. Sew a few stitches, cut off the extra threads, and let it stitch. It takes a while, about 11 minutes, to stitch this design, so I'm just going to let it stitch and explain the other portion of working with this design, and that is the shear section. Every fabric, can, practically any fabric, can be embroidered, but it's sometimes difficult to know exactly what combinations of stabilizer and hooping are needed. To work with a sheer fabric, we do not want to have a heavy, heavy cutaway stabilizer on the underside, so we have a special hoop arrangement. 
I have a sticky back stabilizer hooped, as you can see, and then I cut a window from back from the back of the sticky back stabilizer. Behind this, I put a water soluble stabilizer. Now you can tape that to the underside if you'd like, or there are even adhesive water soluble stabilizers. The uh, number of stabilizers is growing almost weekly, so perhaps by the time you see this program, it may have changed. But the key is to work with a stabilizer that you're going to sew on, a water soluble stabilizer. Now I'm going to tear away some of the sticky back sections so that my sheer fabric will adhere to this portion of the stabilizer. And I'm simply going to place, and it will be easier to work on a flat surface, the, the sheer fabric in the hoop. Not placing the sheer in the hoop, but just around it. And it will stick to the window frame, or if you have an adhesive water soluble stabilizer, it will adhere to that section. This is quite heavy and you'll be able to sew on this sheer fabric. I would highly recommend, though, that you change your needle, put in a new needle when starting to work with shears. After doing the embroidery, cut away the excess fabric of the stabilizer, and then immerse this in water, and you will have a lovely shear to add on top of your background selective embroidery. Eileen took a basic top and pants and added ribbon embroidery, transforming it into a dazzling outfit. Embroidery on ribbons is much like embroidery on a sheer fabric, with the exception that you're working with a much narrower area. Once again, unique hooping is the key, plus creative combinations of color and design. We're going to be working with ribbon that's two to three inches wide. Again, very much like that sheer fabric that I just demonstrated, but this time there's metal wire around the outer edges so that it can be positioned. But the concept of hooping the fabric is what's key to doing the embroidery. As you might guess, we're going to work with a water-soluble stabilizer, since we do not want to have a white or black stabilizer under this. And I'll show you a hooping technique that I like to use. If you have the availability to work with a larger hoop, this is perfect for a ribbon, because it will prevent you from having to re-hoop so frequently. Along the edge of Eileen's top, we, had, we have continuous embroidery. So I made the opening a window opening in clear vinyl. I use I place clear vinyl, very inexpensive fabric, quote unquote, to, to purchase, placed it in the hoop, and then cut a two and a half inch opening down the center. And I think you can see where the vinyl is not in that area. This would be the perfect opportunity to work with the water soluble that has the sticky back. It disappears with water but it has one sticky side, so you'd place this underneath the window opening, and you can use a very small amount of it, which is, helps you with by using this window, you can place it in, put it into place. Then you can simply st place your ribbon on top of this area. At my machine, I'm working with a different color ribbon, a different design. I've already stitched one design in place, but I'm going to do some changing to this. What I'd like to do right now, I'm going to do a mirror image of the design on my machine. I'm just going to go to the machine and press the button so that I get a mirror image so that I don't have all of my designs going in the same direction. It gives it more flow. And then I'm going to place my template on the ribbon so that I know exactly where to start. Now remember, you can make your own templates. You can purchase them. You can print them out. Just use them because it will help so much. This is the correct or the way the design stitches out to get the mirror image I'm just going to flip it and the reason I'm flipping it is so that my little curly cue ends of this vine are meeting each other. Now the long hoop is nice if you have that available because then you can I can get about three designs stitched at once and now I'm going to move the needle position just so that I can start in that right area and I'll move it over a little bit more and as I get to that area, I'll stop, put the presser bar in the sewing position, and start to sew. And as you can see, after sewing on the ribbon, continuously stitching, you'll have a beautiful design along the lower edge. But now you're getting the idea that any fabric can be embroidered, shears to velours, even ribbons. The
technique of placing a sticky back stabilizer in the hoop and attaching the fabric to the stabilizer makes embroidery on delicate fabrics possible. Our next topic, embroidery and the internet. At home and at my studio, I sew with Koala cabinets because of their perfect design. There's no waste of time in getting started. Because of the Koala soft touch airlift system, the machine quickly and gently raises to the perfect sewing position. The design allows me to sit directly in front of the needle in clear view of my work with no strain on my neck or back. And Koala has a place for all my favorite notions and supplies. I always feel more efficient and more motivated to do my best work when my space is organized. A perfect design, that's why I sew with Koala. Here's a hint from Ginger. When you're doing machine embroidery or cut work, it's sometimes a challenge to trim threads and fabric from the hoop fabric. I keep my curved embroidery scissors close by for just those occasions. The curved blade cleanly cuts threads close to my work without cutting my stitching, and the slender blades allow me to cut right next to my straight stitch cut work design. Another terrific use of the curved embroidery scissors is to trim closely to scallop stitching. This is a very versatile scissors. Here's a hint from Adira. Adding a layer of stabilizer to the top or bottom of a project is an important step, giving extra stability to the fabric. For most of my projects, I prefer Avalon by Madeira. This water-soluble stabilizer has double the strength of comparable stabilizers. I simply place the Avalon underneath the fabric, giving the fabric some general stability. If working with nap fabrics like fleece or corduroy to keep the threads from embedding into the nap, Place the Avalon on top and underneath the fabric. When finished, just simply tear away the majority of the stabilizer and spritz the rest away. Here's a hint from Pfaff. For the most accurate of top and edge stitching, use Pfaff's ability to change the needle positions. There are a total of 19 positions ranging from far left to far right, plus many more positions in between. I use the needle position option frequently when using the edge stitch foot. The stitching can be positioned just at your preference. I also use the needle position option when top stitching a zipper. I know you'll find many more uses. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nancy Zeman. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. This program is the final show of a three-part series on amazing machine embroidery encore. My talented guest, embroidery designer Eileen Roche, has inspired me, and I know she's inspired you too with her artistic options. Eileen, it's always great to work with you. Nancy, it's a pleasure to be here and to teach others about the joy of embroidery. I'm especially excited about this program's first project, a high loft fleece pillow highlighted with embroidered squares. The design was downloaded free from the internet, plus we only stitch portions of the designs, a technique we call pick and choose. Discover the joy of amazing machine embroidery next on Sewing with Nancy. We have a lot of diversity to show you in this segment of Sewing with Nancy, working with the internet, picking and choosing designs, working with a high loft fleece fabric. First we'll show you again the pillow and point out what really pick and choose means. The design is a leaf design, and here's the, in the filled-in form. We're using four colors of thread to stitch this lovely design. But the other corners of the pillow feature the same design with select colors. Not all four of them have been stitched for a very interesting look. So you don't have to stick with just the design that's given. You can pick and choose. Now, Eileen, this is a free design. There are many free designs on the internet, but we have one for Sewing with Nancy on the sewingwithnancy.com website. You just go there. That's right, Nancy. And once you're at the home page, you click on TV Sewing Room. And then we're going to select the free embroidery design. And we'll scroll down to the bottom of that page so that we actually see the leaf. And you have a selection of the different formats to choose from. Once you decide which format you need, you follow the directions on the screen as to where to save it in your folder. And after you do that, it's just time to send it right to the embroidery machine. We've already done that off camera. And we have our machine set up for embroidery. We have the embroidery units attached. Refer to your owner's manual as far as how to set up your machine for embroidery. You've lowered the feed dogs placed on an embroidery foot or a darning foot. You have your thread colors of embroidery thread in order. Working with a lightweight thread in the bobbin. And then we're going to discuss the pick and choose technique because not all designs have to be stitched out in the filled in area. On some sample cloth we have the four colors and this is a brilliant leaf 
especially with the rayon thread, it's very shiny, lustrous. But if you would like to work with less than all four colors, perhaps you'd just like to use colors, as you can see, two through four. And it's not as filled in. Same design look, but less stitching. Or just three and four stitch gives you this, this option. And then you can see two and four, and then just an outline. Now it's important too to do some testing with thread. Do you have an idea about outlines and thread? I do, Nancy. Normally I like to choose a, a thread outline that is going to contrast mm -hmm. with our background fabric because like, you go to an awful lot of work and then you lose your design. This one has a more subtle look. You can see the outline is red and isn't as bright as the gold, so the choice can be yours, but you can do some thread testing. And it's just an interesting to, to work with this. Now we're working with a high loft fleece, and we can embroider on practically any fabric. We can. Today, Nancy, there's so many options with stabilizers and mm -hmm. hooping abilities so that you really can embroider on anything today. The stabilizer that's already in the hoop is a sticky-backed stabilizer, and it has a paper covering. And I've scored the image area of the embroidery, just with a pencil point or a pin point, really, and tear off the paper. And then after tearing off the paper, it's sticky. And then you can place your fabric in this area. And you're ready to do the stitching. We're not putting the fabric in the hoop because the hoop may leave an impression on the fabric. That's right, Nancy. And you know, you already have saved your design and you could print a template of that if you need if it's important to center your design in the block. Um, we've cut these out the perfect size, so today we're not going to use a template. I have uh, the sticky back stabilizer right in the hoop and we've already taken away the paper so we're just going to go ahead and select our design and I'm actually going to stitch only color number two and four so I have adv advanced through my colors right at the screen there's an icon here that lets me do that and then I'm just going to go right ahead and start sewing and the interesting thing about embroidering on fleece is that the stitching will flatten the nap it will, and sometimes that's desirable, and sometimes it's not. And mm -hmm. when it's not, like on your jacket, you know, you used a water-soluble stabilizer. My jacket has the same leaf pattern on it, and when hooping it, I placed a water-soluble stabilizer on top so that the stitching was on top of this heavier fleece. It's more lofty than the fleece we're working on now. Mm -hmm. It takes some time to stitch out the design, so I'm going to show you a finished design using two colors. That's color number two and the outline stitch number four. And since this pillow had five basic leaf designs, I don't have to re-hoop every time, but rather just go to the flip side of the embroidery and kind of perforate the design with my scissor point, as I've started to do, and remove the leaf, trying to leave as much stabilizer there as possible. And I have a hole. But well, whenever you have a hole, you like to patch it. And we can do the same with the embroidery hoop. Cut a rectangular square of the sticky back stabilizer, remove the paper backing, and from the flip side of the embroidered area, or the hooped stabilizer, place down, and you can do this better on a flat surface, place the patch. Then when you flip this to the right side, all you have to do now is place the second layer of the fleece, and you're ready to do the embroidery once again. Eileen, you're still stitching number? I'm still stitching number two. Well, oh, that's fine. It's All the work has been done because we did it in the planning. So when working with the design, remember, you can pick and choose. You don't have to use all the fill and design if you don't like. Stitch one through four or stitch one, two, and three. The choice is yours. Remember, you're the designer. Christmas Countdown is the name of this interactive embroidery design. Most kids, small or big, count the days of that special holiday. Nancy and I will show you how to combine dimensional embroidered ornaments with an applique tree. The results are truly memorable. We have two Countdown to Christmas ideas in banners designed by Kate Brzezinski, working with an applique design, the tree in the applique with buttons, button-on ornaments, and pockets along the side to store the special ornaments. Another idea is to have a little bit more embroidery, and this is truly spectacular, an heirloom version of the Countdown to Christmas. Absolutely, Nancy. What Kate did here was, first she took the Honestberg fabric and embroidered snowflakes all over the background. 
She then appliqued the feather tree trunk and then added more embroidery on all the branch the candles are. You can use your imagination to create a tree of your choice, simple or elaborate. But mainly what we want to talk about is creating the, app, excuse me, the ornaments. We have dimensional ornaments where the design of, of our little ballerina is dimensional. You can, as you can see, it can be interactive, that you can button it on or off the feather tree. Or if you didn't want a dimensional one, you could simply work with a patchwork ornament. The choice is yours. The patchwork would be probably for little fingers that would be putting this on or off. Might be a little bit more durable, but certainly either of them would look lovely. Again, you, you can choose the size of your tree, and our base fabric here is about 22 by 36. That's right, Nancy, and then we just took a pie-shaped um, green applique fabric to use for our Christmas tree, added a little bit of red for the tree skirt underneath. It's all pinned in place and ready to be stitched down with a blind applique stitch. We say blind applique because we did make the edges finish, so it, there, it was fusible interfacing and or you could satin stitch just a you could. clean finish edge too. That's right. So the choice is yours how you'd like to work with this. Mm -hmm. But the ornaments are kind of the fun part. We're going to work with our little Santa and simply just do a lot of embroidery. That's right. Um, you would hoop the same similar fabric as to the background fabric and embroider as many designs. Well, you really need 25 when you're counting yes. down to Christmas. Once your embroidery is complete, you then cut it out, add some felt backing, straight stitch that felt backing along the outside edge, and then satin stitch where you had previously stitched. You then cut away the excess felt and you have your finished patchwork. Now the interesting part of, is the hanger in this instance. It's clear elastic. Just about a one inch strip of quarter of an inch wide elastic has been folded in half and then stitched to the upper edge. And this makes the upper edge or this little hanger invisible so that as you button it onto your tree. It certainly stretches over the buttons and we've used a variety of buttons and you can see what kind of fun this is. We can do a Santa, a toy soldier, a little ballerina. Uh, obviously you'd choose either patchwork or dimensional embroidery, that, but we're showing you both combinations here. Now as far as the dimensional, it's the same basic ornament. If I can get it unbuttoned. Here, let me try the horse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There we go. Here we have our rocking horse, and it was stitched on tulle, bridal illusion. Now, bridal illusion isn't something you would normally think of working with embroidery. No, but it's a wonderful base because in bridal illusion, you know, the netting is fairly close together, and when you couple that with water soluble stabilizer, the heavy duty type, two layers, you get a very strong base in order to embroider on. So the illusion is in the middle, very lightweight, just like brides walk down the aisle with, but then the very heavy water-soluble stabilizer to create a sandwich. We'll place these layers, three layers, over the larger hoop, and then sandwich them all together, snap down the hoop, and we're ready to do the stitching. Now, Eileen's going to show you some a stitching technique so that we can get as many embroidery designs in this area as possible, so we don't have to do a lot of rehooping. We'll go to the machine and show you that right now. Throughout this series, we've used templates for positioning of designs. We're not creating a scene in this particular instance, making ornaments, but we're going to use templates to determine how many ornaments we can get in one embroidery field, so we don't have to rehoop the fabric. I've started by placing a, a template of a nutcracker, as well as a little shadow or a little gift box and I, th I know I can get one more design. The rocking horse going in the normal position, I don't think it's going to fit, so I can put it, rotate it 90 degrees, and it will be just fine. Now that you have all your templates in place, take them all off, except, of course, the one you're going to be working with, and Eileen is going to show you how to do the positioning at the machine. Now, you've already stitched two of the three, so I'm going to pass along the rocking horse to you. That's right, Nancy, and um, since you already determined that we need to rotate our design, I'm going to go put the template in position in a rotated position, select my design at the machine, and I'm going to rotate it. First, it's going to give me a number of prompts, and I have to tell it, oh yes, I did all that, and then I'm going to rotate it one time. I'm making sure that the design on the screen and the design on the template are matching. 
Now it's time to move to the center start position of the template. If I, were if I did not do this, then my rocking horse would actually stitch over mm -hmm. my, my nutcracker. Not very desirable. Remove my template, lower the presser foot, and let's stitch. The amazing part about stitching on Bridal Illusion is that it works. Even though the thread coverage is heavy, you have the stabilizer. You do. And, you know, in this application, we're not going to see the wrong side of the embroidery because it's going to be laying against the wall hanging. So, on right now, we're using a white bobbin thread, and on these designs, I had actually used a black bobbin mm -hmm. thread. But, Nancy, if it was something that you would actually s show the wrong side, then you would match your bobbin thread to your needle thread. This design has seven different colors. I've matched up the remaining colors in, in a row the way we're going to be using them, and you'd simply just stitch along. It's just the planning part that takes sometimes the greatest time. We're going to go back to our feather Christmas tree banner and show you some of the ornaments that are in place. I like this little ballerina quite a bit. And after you've stitched all the designs, then cut out the design, or cut out the tool and the stabilizer as close to the embroidery as possible. I did soak the, the ornaments to get rid of the excess stabilizer and then trim away any extra tooling. But I did leave a little extra tooling between the arm and the skirt to give it some stability. Add a little hoop, a hoop to the top and you're ready to add it to your great banner. When embroidering, the key to success is in the planning. Our Garden Friends Valance showcases a variety of embroidery techniques, including use of templates, adding sketchy embroidery, mirror imaging designs, and dimensional butterflies and dragonflies. To make all of these elements work together, planning was the first step. Next, Eileen and I would like to detail the plan. This valance really is quite a showcase, as we mentioned, of different embroidery techniques. We just finished making ornaments. That's right, dimensional embroidery. The dimensional embroidery technique is the same for the dragonflies and butterflies. As you can see, they have been stitched on the bridal illusion with the water-soluble stabilizer sandwich, and then instead of making an, an um, ornament out of it, we simply stitch these to the valance down the center area. A lot of the planning was involved with templates to get the design to flow across the lower edge of this valance. This is just an absolutely beautiful um, example of thread sketching. And these designs are shown first in the regular application and then later on as we move down the valance we'll show it in mirror image like this wrought iron fence. That was placed right there and then we take our um, lilac bush, again we place it like that and to extend the design area we just mirror imaged it, connected the two designs and stitched our way down. Again we add another wrought iron fence and this time there's a bluebird sitting up on the post. There he is. And you know, templates enable you to precisely place him right on the tip of the post. The embroidery is on Osenberg fabric, a relatively medium weave of fabric. We used a stabilizer on the underside. We didn't need a stabilizer on the top. It required a bit of rehooping to get all of these designs to go across the lower edge, but it's really a dramatic look. We have bluebirds, we have chickadees, dragonflies, plus, of course, butterflies. So right. it truly is a garden friend mm -hmm. dream. And you know, all of the embroidery would occur before you hem, mm -hmm. so that you would have an extended fabric down here so that it would be easier to hoop, and also before your sides were uh, either trimmed away or hemmed, enabling you to just run right down the bottom of the valance. We want to show you the versatility of embroidery designs. You don't have to have, you're not limited to perhaps making the butterflies very realistic. You can make them, as we discussed earlier in this series, to look like red work or blue work. Blue work is th only using blue thread, and we've used the outline stitches on this tote using the same set of embroidery memory cards with, this time, just the outline stitch. You can see we don't have the fill-in stitch of the decorative area. Within this design, you'll also find a bittersweet vine. But the bittersweet this time is just stitched in the blue, the outline stitch. And isn't it charming? From one patch to another, we walk around the design. You can see how it forms a wreath, like a grapevine wreath. 
but again we've used this same card but with a totally different look. Absolutely, it's just beautiful, just a work of art. That's some of the beauty of working with embroidery. As I said earlier, our co-workers, the sewers and embroiderers, become the designers. Eileen, your designs are great. I've been inspired by this. I really appreciate having the opportunity to work with you. Thank you, Nancy. I loved being here. I hope that you will now take these designs and work with them. I stitched my first computerized embroidery design on a chambray shirt. While shirts are wonderful palettes for embroidery, I hope that Eileen and I have inspired you to give your embroidery an encore performance, adding beautiful designs to a variety of fabrics. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Visit Nancy's website at www.sewingwithnancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy has been made possible by grants from the following companies. Bop, simply the best European line of sewing machines. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Madeira threads, because creativity is never black and white. Prim Drifts, the source for sewing and quilting notions. Amazing designs by Great Notions, your one source for home embroidery. Koala Cabinets, designed with maximum storage using minimum space. Roenta, professional performance and beautiful results for all types of ironing. And Nancy's Notion Sewing Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and notions.